the F-16XL, a fighter jet that could have revolutionized aerial combat. But why did the U.S. Air Force need to build it, and why did they abandon this project in the middle? Let's dive into the story of one of the most intriguing aircraft in aviation history. In the 1970s, the United States Air Force was on the lookout for a fighter jet that could outperform its predecessors. They needed something fast, maneuverable, and capable of carrying a heavier load. Enter the F-16XL, a modified version of the already successful F-16 Fighting Falcon. The F-16XL was designed with a unique cranked aero delta wing, a feature that set it apart from its sibling. This design increased the surface area of the wings, allowing for a greater payload capacity and enhanced aerodynamic performance at supersonic speeds. The cranked aero wing shape of the F-16XL was initially proposed for use on supersonic airliners, highlighting its innovative approach to aerodynamics. This wing design not only provides greater lift, but also improves maneuverability and overall efficiency compared to the standard F-16 configuration. But the main question is why was the F-16XL built? So, the reason behind its creation was that the U.S. Air Force needed a versatile multi-role fighter that could serve as both an air superiority fighter and a strike aircraft. The XL's design promised improved range, better fuel efficiency, and the ability to carry a wider variety of weapons. With its increased payload, the F-16XL could carry more weapons than the standard F-16. It was capable of carrying a wide array of bombs and missiles, including the AIM-9 Sidewinder, AIM-120 AMROM, AGM-88 Harm, and various guided bombs. The F-16XL was powered by the Pratt & Whitney F-100PW200 turbofan engine, capable of producing over 29,000 pounds of thrust with an afterburner. This gave the jet a top speed of over Mach 2, that's more than twice the speed of sound. With a maximum takeoff weight of over 48,000 pounds, the F-16XL could carry up to 15,000 pounds of ordnance, spread across 27 hardpoints on its wings and fuselage. The jet also boasted a combat radius of over 800 miles, making it an ideal candidate for deep strike missions. So, with all these advantages, why did the U.S. Air Force abandon the F-16XL? In the early 1980s, the Air Force launched the Enhanced Tactical Fighter, the ETF Competition, seeking a replacement for the aging F-111 Aardvark. The F-16XL competed against the F-15E Strike Eagle, another modified fighter with a larger payload and longer range. After rigorous testing and evaluation, the F-15E was chosen over the F-16XL. The Strike Eagle's twin-engine design offered better survivability, and it could carry a heavier payload over a longer range. As a result, the F-16XL program was shelved, with only two prototypes ever built. So, what happened to the F-16XL prototypes? Today, both jets are part of the NASA fleet and are used for various experimental flight programs. NASA utilized the F-16XL for research on supersonic laminar flow and sonic boom effects, in collaboration with the SR-71 Blackbird program. This partnership underlines the aircraft's role in advancing aerospace technology and understanding the dynamics of high-speed flight. While the F-16XL never saw any combat, its design and the data gathered from its development continue to influence modern aircraft design. The F-16XL remains a fascinating what-if in the history of military aviation. Though it never became the backbone of the U.S. Air Force, it left a lasting legacy, inspiring future generations of aircraft. Who knows what the skies would look like today if the F-16XL had taken flight as intended? The F-16XL offers enhanced range and aerodynamic performance due to its unique wing design, making it suitable for extended missions while carrying substantial payloads. However, advancements in avionics and combat technology in the later F-16 variants, like the Block 60 and Block 70, provide them tactical advantages that the F-16XL, as an experimental model, does not encompass fully.